everyone, Stephanie Dinman here from the Dinman Homestead, and it has been a while since I have been in the kitchen showing you guys how I make soap. The same soaps that you guys are able to buy from our Etsy store, um, the Dinman Homestead Etsy store. And I'm about to make a single batch of unscented goat's milk soap. Um, so goat's milk soap is just very gentle on the skin, especially for those with um, allergies to fragrances or deodorants, detergents, those types of things. And the goat's milk actually has fats in the milk that are nourishing to the skin as well. So there are other milk soaps out there, but I think goat's milk is a very popular one because it's so gentle and hydrating for the skin. Let me address one question that I get often. What kind of soap won't dry out my skin? Uh, I, I have very dry skin. I want something that's going to hydrate me. Um, and I can tell you one thing that I think is a common misconception is that if soaps are marketed to leave your skin feeling soft and supple, um, it's probably full of a lot of ingredients that are not great for you. Uh, preservatives, additives, plastics, uh, things like that. So soap in its bare form and its original use and intended purpose was to strip your body of oils, bacteria, all of those things on your skin, dirt, grime, dead skin cells, that's what the purpose for soap is. So soap is supposed to strip your skin of its natural oils. Now, with that being said, you can include in your soaps different things that are good for your skin, um, leaving your skin feeling not as dry, such as shea butter, cocoa butter, mango butter, different uh, oils, um, and in particular goat's milk because it has those extra fats in the soap. So adding those good ingredients can help your skin not feel so dry. But if you're looking, if you're having a hard time finding an all natural soap or a soap in general that leaves your skin feeling like you've just had a bath with baby oil, that's not good for you. So bathe with your natural soap and then if you want to feel hydrated and um, put, put on lotion. <laughs> Put on lotion after your bath, so to hydrate and to lock in uh, your skin with uh, moisture. So, yes, soap can be drying. Different types of soaps are more drying than others, but if you're looking for a soap, like I said, to make your skin feel like you just had a bath in oil, that's not what we're going for right now, okay? So, well, after all that, let's get started with a basic goat's milk recipe. Now, this is a cold process recipe. And what that means is, some of my soaps are hot process where I cook them in a crock pot and I let that uh, saponification process happen, that chemical process happen with the lye within 24, 48 hours. However, because I'm working with goat's milk and it is, it has fat in it, cooking it on a high heat is going to scorch the milk. So, in order to avoid scorching the milk, we want to do a cold process, uh, bringing the temperatures down lower, closer to, you know, 90 degrees or so, and not burning the fats in the milk. Now, if you burn the milk, what you're going to see is your uh, solution turn orange and curdly. We want our solution to remain like a creamy white to off-white. Uh, yellow sometimes, but if it gets orange, then you have scorched the fats in the milk and it can turn rancid. Um, it's not going to mix very well with your soap, so you're going to have to toss it. So I'm going to show you how I do it in order to not scorch my milk. And um, there's other ways you can do it as well. I know people make uh, their soaps with powdered goat's milk and reconstituting it in that way. I don't ever use powdered goat's milk. I use fresh goat's milk, but I freeze it. Um, I freeze it and then I add my lye solution to it so that it doesn't scorch. So let me explain that. All right, so before we get started, I'm going to talk about the ingredients that we're going to use in this recipe. 
Uh, here in this container, I've got um, my already pre-measured out portions with my scale to make it a little easier. But I have my coconut oil and my shea butter because we're using coconut oil and shea butter in this recipe. And check the details of this video below and afterwards if you'd like the detailed uh, amounts of everything in the recipe for this, it, I'll list it there for you. But in this Pyrex glass container, I have 200 grams of coconut oil and 150 grams of shea, shea butter. So I'll set that aside. Here I have 400 grams of olive oil. And then I have 50 grams of castor oil. Okay, castor oil is really good for your skin, your hair, all of that. All right, so we've got our oil set aside. Now let's go ahead and start on our lye solution. So you do need lye to, in order to make soap. Um, can't really call it soap without lye. So when you are first beginning using um, lye solution, make sure that you are protecting yourself until you feel more comfortable working with it. Uh, gloves, safety goggles, long sleeve t-shirt if you'd like. Um, so lye is caustic and it will burn your skin if you get it on your skin. If you do get it on your skin, uh, you'll know it and just run your hand under some cold water with some soap and so you can get that off your skin. Okay? All right. So to my mason jar here, I'm using grams in this recipe, so I'm gonna pour in 100 grams of water, and this is distilled water. It's important that you use distilled water. Okay, 100 grams of distilled water, and the reason why we use distilled water is because it's free of any uh, additives, minerals, trace minerals, chemicals like chlorine, fluoride, stuff that you could get from your tap, your city water, even your well water, uh, even spring water. Those all have different um, tiny microscopic things that can actually mess up your soap. So I use distilled water for my soaps. So I've got 100 grams of distilled water here. Now we're going to add in our goat's milk. We need 100 grams of frozen goat's milk. This is how I freeze my goat's milk. And it makes it very easy to um, measure them out so that you don't have to worry about breaking off chunks of a frozen block or something like that. Now, if I were to have just poured in refrigerated goat's milk and not frozen goat's milk, and then I added my lye to it, it would scorch it and burn it. So free by freezing your goat's milk, you, um, reduce the risk of your goat's milk burning because it's frozen and it lowers the temperature down uh, pretty drastically. It will melt pretty quickly once you add your lye solution to it, um, but it won't scorch as easy. All right, and I know pretty much from past experience that it's gonna take about six of these in order to get 100 grams. So I'm just going to pour off a tiny bit of this water, which has already started to melt with my cubes, just so I can make sure I'm at 200. Okay, great. I'll put this back in the freezer. So I've got my mason jar with my distilled water and my goat's milk ice cubes. The next step is to add in my lye, which is right here in this container. So I'm just going to scoop out a little bit of lye and slowly add it to this. And then I'm going to start stirring it until it's all completely dissolved. And for this recipe, we're going to need 107 grams of lye. So I'm going to restart that, so zero it out. I'm going to slowly add in this lye.
107 grams. So I'm gonna stir this together, and you're gonna, I'm gonna let you see this, because it's gonna start to turn to from white to kind of a yellow. So I wanna keep stirring, because it's gonna start to heat up and melt these cubes. You see it already changing color? dissolved. I'm going to actually stick this mason jar into a bowl of ice because I want to start to it I want it to start to cool down pretty quickly. I don't want it to continue to heat up. Okay. And my main goal is to get this solution down to about 90 degrees. I'm also gonna wanna get my oils here in a second down to 90 degrees. I want them to be relatively similar in temperature when I combine them both. Um, and I definitely don't want them to be too hot because you don't want a hot uh, lye solution with a hot oil solution doing a cold process soap. Um, because then you can end up with something called volcanoing, where you pour it in your mold and it continues to heat up. And it essentially tries to do like what a crock pot would do, and it uh, just continues to bubble and it'll bubble over actually. So we want to bring this down to room temp or to around 90 degrees, and I'm just stirring it a little bit just to make sure that I get everything fully dissolved and incorporated. I don't see any separation. I don't see any orange chunks like burned or scorched fats floating to the top because you will know if you did. It, it looks like like curdled milk but orange. So this is still a very um, fluid thin consistency and the yellow color almost like scrambled eggs. Now you could take it a step forward uh, further if you wanted to and freeze your distilled water and add your lye to your frozen distilled water and your frozen ice cubes of goat's milk and have it cool, or cool down that way, but I find that this way is sufficient enough and then I just stick it in a bucket of ice for a little bit while I work on the, the next step. Okay, we've already got our oils measured out, so what I need to do now is I need to get this into a liquid state. I'm gonna pop this in the microwave. You could also do a double boiler and melt this down but the microwave works just as well. So I'm gonna microwave this until this all becomes liquid together and then I'm gonna combine my two other liquid uh, oils, the olive oil and the castor oil together with this and then I'll show you the next step. Okay, that took about three and a half minutes. Um, and so the smaller you cut your shea butter into, the probably the quicker it will melt. The larger chunks take longer to melt down completely. So um, I have just got the last one to dissolve in the coconut oil, so I'm just giving this a little bit of a stir. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour this oil into a larger bowl, because I'm about to combine everything here in a second. So I'm going to pour my liquid coconut oil and shea butter in here. Um, one thing I needed to add that I forgot was that make sure when you're doing your lye solution, that you always, always pour your lye into your water, or the, in this instance, the water goat's milk. Um, because if you add your liquid into your lye, you can create a combustible uh, chemical reaction where it actually, you know, fizzes up and, and explodes or, you know, over, overflows. So just always add your lye to your liquids not your liquids to your lye, if that makes sense. Okay, <clears throat> so let's add in our olive oil. And castor oil. A 
Could I have added all the oils into this um, container and then heated it up? Sure. But by heating up the solid oil separately, uh, we eliminated the need to cool down everything at once where the olive oil and the castor oil were already at room temperature. So that'll help bring the temperature down quicker for the remaining, uh, remaining oils here. It's not settled to the bottom, so I'm just going to pour that back in here. Give this a quick stir, make sure everything's well incorporated. Another handy gadget I have is this infrared laser thermometer. This comes in handy with so many things that I do. Um, but I just aim it at this bowl here. <clears throat> it's going to tell me the temperature. Um, it's 111 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, then I can also shoot it in my little mason jar here with my lye solution. Get a little mix. Okay, and the lye solution is 116 degrees. So they're just a couple degrees off, which is not, not bad at all. So to me, that tells me that they're going to probably calm down around the same t time. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and stick this bowl in another bowl of ice. Just to help bring the temperatures down quickly. Uh, so I'm not waiting around forever. And they each need to come down about 15 degrees anyway, or down to around 90 degrees. So I'm just going to let these sit and I'm going to continue to kind of stir this one around, agitate it some so it's getting, uh, everyone's getting a chance to run across that cold ice down below. And we will just come back and check on these in just a minute. So while these are cooling off, I want to address a couple questions that I get, free, well, let's say frequently asked questions. Um, so some of you may ask, Stephanie, what if I'm allergic to coconut oil or coconut oil is a big one um, or certain oil that I use in the soap and let's say you want to try it on your own. There are substitutes for all kinds of oils. Um, if you don't want to use coconut oil, you may be able to use a different type of oil. My suggestion to you is go online and look up a soap calculator or something called a lye calculator, L-Y-E or soap calculator. Both will take you to roughly the same thing. There's a ton of free options out there. What you do is you plug in all the ingredients that you have and it spits out the proper ratios, um, amounts that you need, the percentages that you need to your lye distilled water. So if you don't have coconut oil on hand or you don't use coconut oil, but maybe you've got, I don't know, another hard oil like tallow or mango butter or shea or cocoa, whatever it may be. Or let's just say that you ran out of shea, but you've got a little bit of cocoa butter. Um, can you interchange them? Definitely go online and plug it in that soap calculator and it'll tell you the exact amounts that you need to make a safe soap. That's what I recommend there. This soap that we're about to make I'm putting in this silicone mold. This is a one pound, approximately, silicone mold. And I will cut this into 10 bars. Um, this silicone mold pops right out of this wood. This wood kind of keeps its shape from like bending and doing all wonky things when you pour it in there. So um, I'm gonna let this sit in this mold once we pour it <clears throat> for about 24 to 48 hours. I'm gonna keep an eye on it, kind of feel around on it, see if it's still kind of pliable or tacky or if it's set up pretty well. So um, this is the mold that we're going to be using today. You can double this recipe. I normally double this recipe, but I wanted to do a single recipe because I felt like that's what would be common uh, for most people. So I'm going to use this uh, one pound silicone mold for this one and uh, we'll cut it in a couple days. Now, why do we need to What's the difference between cold process and hot process? You have to wait. So once you cut it, you have to wait and let that soap cure um, for at least four weeks. What that does, it's a slow reaction, leaching the um, lye out and the water out of the soap base. Um, and it allows for that saponification process to happen, but it's at a slower rate. 
Now there's pros and cons to doing cold versus hot. Hot, you get instant gratification. You get that, you can use that soap pretty quickly. They say it's safe after 48 hours, <clears throat> you know, 24, 48 hours. I tend to want to let them sit a little longer. I feel like right at that 48 hour mark, uh, still kind of tacky and spongy. So hot process soaps tend to be softer bars than cold process soaps. They're still exactly the same as far as uses go. Just one's a more harder bar, one's a softer bar. So, um, and in this case, I definitely like cold process because I don't want to scorch and burn and cook my milk. So that's why we use cold process soap in this version. Okay, we're at 94 degrees on this lye solution and we are at 102 here, oh, 101. So I'm gonna take this one out. It's cooling down pretty quickly. We'll have this one down to 90. Okay, all in all, it took about 15 minutes once they were in the ice bath to come down to temperature. Our lye solution here is about 88 degrees, and this is about 91, so we're gonna call it combined 90 degrees, okay? Uh, with, as long as they're within like five degrees of each other, that's where I feel comfortable combining them. All right, so we've got our oil here, our lye solution here, and my mold is right here. I am going to use an immersion blender um, once I pour this solution into this solution and blend this until it comes to trace. What trace is, is when you're able to kind of use your spoon here and draw like a little bit of a line or you can even use your the top of your immersion blender and you make a little bit of a, like a little line on top and if it holds its shape for a minute there or for a second, um, that's when you've reached a light trace, when it when you're able to just make a little bit of a, um, a dribble and it stays on the top, it may just immediately reabsorb, that's a light trace. Then when you get it to a thicker pudding consistency, that's a pretty heavy trace. So we're just gonna bring it to trace. Now once you bring it to trace, at that point is when you can add your essential oils, your fragrance oils, um, your colorants, things like that, any additives, you want to add it at trace. But today, I'm not adding any of that because this is going to be an unscented, basic goat's milk soap, um, specifically for sensitive skin. So, <clears throat> let's get this started. Okay, and just like before, we're going to pour our lye solution into our others. We're not going to pour this into lye, we're going to pour this the lye solution into our oils. This is still a very caustic um, solution that can burn you, so just use caution. Another thing to note is that some, I'm going to go ahead and stir this to combine it before I put my blender in. Some Essential oils can heat up your solution. Some fragrance oils can heat up your solution again. It can interact with the lye solution in the soap base and actually cause it to heat. So if you're having questions about that, if it'll behave well in cold process soaps, uh, just do a quick Google on what scents and uh, fragrances will behave well in these types of soaps and that way you'll know the amounts and which ones you should um, use and which ones you shouldn't. All right, so this is pretty much combined. I'm going to go ahead and stick my blender in here and blend it up. All right, I'm gonna to try to show you what light trace looks like. 
So we have reached it. Let's see if you can see. Um, I'm just barely lifting up and it's uh, you're able to see that it's holding its shape on the top of the soap. So this is a pretty light trace. It's not very, it's not super thick. It's not like pudding consistency yet, but this is what we, we want to reach right here um, before we, we actually can pour this into our mold. So this is that pourable state right here. So um, I'm, I'm comfortable with where this is at, at trace, and so I'm going to go ahead and pour this. All right, so I just have my mold right here. I'm gonna take a spatula so I can get all of this out. I don't want to waste any. So this is what it looks like, and I'm just going to smooth out the top a little bit, and then I'm going to give it a little bit of a tap. Now what that does, it allows any bubbles that may be trapped on the sides or at the bottom to come to the top. And it kind of gives just like a smooth, let me see, finish. You see that? Smooth finish on top. Um, so this will just sit. So I will just go sit this in a spot away from anyone that can jump on it or get in it. Um, and then tomorrow I will take this out of the wooden container, peel back the silicone, see if it's going to need a couple like another day or so, sometimes they set up pretty fast, depending on the weather too. Um, the humidity and the heat in the house, it all kind of depends on how quickly these will set up. So it may need uh, an extra day, but I'll check on it tomorrow. And then once it's hardened uh, and I can peel away uh, the sides pretty easily, that's when I'll cut them and I'll set them aside so that it can cure for a month before it goes on our Etsy store. So. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today in the kitchen. It feels really good to be making soap with you guys again. And I hope this was helpful for anyone who wants to start making their own goat's milk soap. It's very easy. Um, it's not as complicated as some may think it is, but uh, I enjoy doing it. It's a hobby of mine that I love, and I love sharing it with you guys. So thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye, guys.